Hello everybody, it's Shiklid. It's been a while. So Tekken 8 has been out for a little over a month, and uh, needless to say, I absolutely love it. I love the visual presentation. This game looks absolutely beautiful, and uh, the character designs are absolutely sick. Steve is fucking awesome. And uh, all the newcomers, I like all the designs of them, and uh, everybody looks great. This game feels good to play, the sound engineering of all the hits and all of the things going on, it's just wonderful. The only things that I don't really like about the game are pretty much the obvious ones. It all relates to online play, so for example, the uh, all the plugging and cheating that is going on. Uh, that is not what I'm particularly fond of, nobody is. So yeah, but my overall verdict for this game is that it is absolutely amazing. What I'm here to talk about is uh, my boy uh, Steve Box, um, the uh, middleweight boxing champion of the world. And he is unbelievably cool in this game. I love the new stance going into Lionheart from uh, Outfox. It's just that he feels really fun to play. But one thing about him is that um, everybody talks about like balance in this game of like who's strong and who's not. And uh, the very interesting thing about Steve is that it's kind of like, um, it's really hard to say whether he is good or bad. The thing is, he definitely isn't bad, but he isn't particularly strong either. And the reason I say that is because uh, a lot of the changes that were made from Tekken 7 to this game are, uh, of course, monumental. He has no launching capabilities whatsoever from normal hits, for example. The main example being uh, back to not being launch, not a launch button anymore. But a lot of his stuff that used to be uh, launching on normal hits, you can sort of get mini combos with. Uh, for example, back two can go into uh, uh, manual peekaboo forward one plus two. So combos are pretty much not necessarily nerfed per se, but sort of transformed into uh, not like wall carry combos but guaranteed damage or guaranteed hits another example being up back to uh, one of my favorite new moves that they have added um also goes huge plus frames on hit guaranteeing for example a lionheart one like so and goes into heat and all of that stuff or you can cancel it and do other stuff like uh, this or uh a 2-2 will not work in this situation. But another one would be, uh, for example... I don't know if my execution is on point, but... There we go. That took me an embarrassingly long time to get. Well, like, a minute. But regardless, that is technically possible to get, but it is uh, very, very technical. If you're familiar with the Shiro combo from Tekken 7, it is uh, pretty much the same sort of instant uh, going into flicker like on hit you cancel it into flicker duck and one two so stuff like that you get like guaranteed damage and stuff so another huge factor that is back from the previous game is of course his counter hit game still uh, very strong in this game pretty much uh the only fast high counter hit launcher in the game now so he is exclusively, he has the exclusive ownership of having a counter hit fast high. Because all the magic fours are gone from the game, which is a godsend. It was very tough in the previous game to get in on the opponent, if they had like a counter hit magic four. Steve's new heat stuff is very, very interesting. He has this instant ducking mechanic. You get instant extended duck stuff. This is super cool. One thing is that it probably... It takes away a lot of the heat. And then you have your, of course, your uh, clinch from here, which is super cool. You have your two and you have your one. So basically what makes Steve strong in this game is the fact that he's sort of, he's still the counter hit rushdown oriented, but now added on some uh, pseudo 
mix up stuff with the addition of uh, Lionheart. It's pretty safe to say that Steve is uh, pretty strong in this game, especially if you have uh, very decent fundamentals. You can get very far with Steve uh, with uh, a lot of his, you know, basic stuff, you know, jab, jab strings, counter hit uh, stuff. Um, his lows are still very, very garbage. There, there is nothing threatening here whatsoever. And it's very bizarre that a lot of his moves now go or transition into a Lionheart stance automatically. It forces you into this stance, which I'm not a huge fan of, really. His strengths are, of course, uh, the counter hits, his uh, rushdown or poking, varies, and he's very safe when he's doing so. Uh, but his biggest enemy is uh, the fact that people are super evasive. There are unbelievable amount of evasive characters in this game. That It's a huge problem for Steve. Because his best attacks are all either highs or their mids. And his lows are very... Uh, they're not threatening, but they're definitely annoying, you know. But uh, like there isn't really that much to be scared of here, you know. And a lot of his lows, like they, they're a minus on hit. This one too, minus on hit if the second hit gets blocked. Of course, this is a uh, on counter hit, you get plus two. Not huge frame advantage anywhere. And that is, of course, understandable because you have a counter hit back one. But still, uh, you really need to calculate how you approach your opponent because anytime they can just do something uh, super evasive. And also, the fact that you can't really launch punish on block anymore with steve there is a lot of stuff that uh, other characters can just throw out pretty much for free uh, and the worst thing that you can get hit by is probably uh if you're heavily minus you get hit by this which is still like a respectful amount of damage but out in the open not that's like this is not uh this is not full uh, full wall, wall carry combo damage threatening, you know what I mean? And then stuff like his uh, 15 frame doesn't launch, it does give a knockdown though. This is a very good block punishment tool, but that's it, you know, no launch. And the fact that most combos in this game uh, pretty much take half-life as its tradition from Tekken 7 to Tekken 8. And you always have to be a lookout for moves like uh, Jin's down 2. Like, you're throwing a lot more mids in this game than you ever pretty much needed to do before, I feel. What I'm trying to say is that Steve is very good in this game, but it's just, uh, he, he falls behind. The Lionheart stance is very strong, but, I mean, it, it kind of has been the song and dance with Steve. It's that you get to have a lot of this, this strength and safety and uh, damage and counter hits and all of that. But opening up turtles is a lot harder in this game, I feel. I mean, I would say Steve is like a strong mid-tier character. Like, he has very defined uh, strengths and weaknesses. But when there are, f like, characters that have very few weaknesses, or almost no weaknesses, it feels like an uphill battle most of the time. But, uh, of course, it feels more rewarding whenever you do uh, win in this game, so there's nothing more rewarding than actually playing solid and winning with Steve, and uh, or outplaying in general, so yeah. Steve, not for the faint of heart, but, <laughs> but he's very fun. He's still very fun, but I think it's just he needs some work, especially with this uh, dance uh, transition. Like, we should be able to choose whether we go into this dance or not. Like, I would totally see that you could do back 1-2, hold forward for uh, Peekaboo, and hold back for Lionheart, or something like that. I don't know if any of this made sense, but I hope uh, but I hope you got something out of this. Yeah, keep playing Steve. He's still really cool. So yeah, thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. It's really, really cool. So, uh, thanks. Till next time.
拜拜。